so let's go back to 1 kilohertz. And this circuit can switch to about 100 kilohertz if you really look at it. This is what the wave looks like at 300 kilohertz. Okay. It looks like that. So it's not a perfect square wave. Now that's attached to the cell. If I remove the cell and just leave the light bulb, okay, the square wave is still pretty nice. You get a, a little little ring right there, but other than that, it's pretty good. Now this might be from cross, this might be from crossover conduction in between the two transistors. <coughs> I'm not really sure. Now one amazing thing about this circuit is that it'll put out a square wave no matter what the input is. See? So, you know, it's not, this isn't an amplifier um, of any normal class. It's actually a switching circuit, a dedicated switching circuit. Alright. Now, this diode is here to prevent a cross conduction. But when you get to a higher frequency, it all, you know, it, it'll you'll still get cross conduction because the, the, the wave is moving too fast. <coughs> but I'm not exactly sure how to explore that right now. Um, it's a really simple circuit to build. Basically you got a totem pole that switches a, a MOSFET and now supposedly you can have a higher voltage on the MOSFET than you have on the input circuit. I haven't tried it out yet because I just finished building this thing and I don't want to burn it out. <coughs> but uh, for now, I just got a 12 volt. I got 12 volt on the input and 12 volts on the output. So, so let me show you how that works as far as the input and the output wave. I'm going to go back to 1 kilohertz. Okay. Now you see, I have a pulse wave going to the input. Okay. And I have the scope probe on the input leg of the circuit which would be which would be right there on that 1.2k resistor okay and then I have the scope probe over here on the bottom leg of the load and obviously both the uh, probes are grounded okay now that light bulb that light bulb in the circuit is right on top of this leg okay so I have a probe from the ground to on the other side of the MOSFET and that's the output wave okay that's this wave here <coughs> so if I change this to let's say we change it to an alternating square wave instead of just a pulse wave you still get a square wave out which is a pulse wave okay Alright, so you can see how that's a square wave output. Now look, if I change this to a triangle wave, so the input is a triangle wave, we still have a square wave output. Because the circuit is just looking for a... It's looking for a trigger. It's not looking for... It's not looking for an actual frequency to amplify. That's why I say this isn't an amplifier. It's just a, a level shift switch circuit sine wave. You see we have a sine wave on the input and we're still getting square waves on the output. Now this scope I don't think it triggers on the on the uh, the exact slope of each wave. So this wave might be inverted but I haven't tested that yet. But just so you know this feature is a great help to switching for for any of these cells because what it does is it eliminates the possibility of the output wave being thrown off by uh, subtle variations in the input and if you, you can see that uh, it'll actually it'll actually prevent vast changes in the wave <laughs> being thrown off by the input because obviously the difference between the sine wave and a triangle wave is huge and uh, just the fact that it ends up as a square wave anyway it's a great thing. So uh, took a lot of research to find out exactly what to look for because I didn't design this circuit. I looked for it on the internet, but I made a couple of changes to it. There's a couple of other designs too, like this one right here, but I haven't tried it yet. Now, further videos, I'm gonna uh, 
I'm going to try using a higher voltage because we want to switch like at least house mains current through this thing. And uh, then we're going to start hooking up coils to this bad boy. We're going to really have some fun. So anyway, that's where we're at right now.